I'm gonna say it all right now Cause I just gotta let you know It's better than Kevin, what did you just find? I just found a tree over there with Mirabel. I don't know what they're called in German, um, but they were very famous in Metz, France, when we lived there. And we're not. What? And we lived on the Moselle River. This is the Moselle River. Yes. And, and, and Metz is on the Moselle River. What? And so these Mirabel were very popular in Metz. And so I found a tree there and picked a few of them, and all the kids will get to try them. What? Yes, so this, I mean, this area of the world is special to us because we came back and forth to Berg Elks, like, I don't know, three or four times. Three times. Yeah, and yeah, and when I went we to lived. Trier several times, you know, we came across this way many times when we lived what? in France. Yeah, so it's really cool for us to bring our children back here. We're excited to show them Trier tomorrow, and we're really excited because our, our Airbnb is right there, okay, right, right there, and we're eating right here what? it was such a long commute we can't even like oh it's too <laughs> thoughtful what what griffin well it's totally to me are you excited for dinner griffin's getting wiener schnitzel art Oh, hey everybody! Hello! Welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. Hey, and I'm Kevin. And we are an American family who moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021. And we're sharing all of our adventures with you. We have four kids. And a cat. <laughs> and poor Kevin. He doesn't have a voice. We have a nope. cat, but no voice. Not much. <laughs> Last week, we were in Galtur, Austria. And I'll share that video up here for you and down in the video description. Uh, we had a fabulous time in the Austrian Alps. It was yep. a dream vacation at a Kinder Hotel. And then we came home for two days. Yeah. Washed a ton of clothes. <laughs> then we headed six hours north up here to the Moselle River, the Mosul River. It's Moselle in French. Yeah, we have a hard time. Well, how we learned about the river was the Moselle because we used to live on it. So Yeah, we used to live in Metz, France, so we're on the Moselle. always thinking Moselle, so we have to remember, no, it's Moselle. It's Moselle in German and Moselle in French. So we wanted to bring our kids up here to show them Berg Elt and Kolchem Castle and just the Moselle River. And uh, our only mistake was planning two vacations back to back. That yeah. wasn't the best idea. With only a couple days in between. <laughs> the kids are quite tired. Uh, they really wish that we would have had more time at home. And um, everyone ended up coming down with a summer cold. It's not COVID, we've all been tested. <laughs> And actually, we are vaccinated, so uh, it's very uh, highly unlikely that it's COVID. But yeah, so we're kind of under the weather and not feeling well, and <laughs> and you but can't still, it's nice. you can't plan vacation around that. I mean, you just never know if you're going to get sick or not. Yeah, so we are in Mosul Kern, which isn't like in the absolute heart of everything, but it is close to Berg Elts. And it's still very charming. It's very charming, very small, cute little village. It's quiet here, which is nice. And um, our Airbnb host, Oleg and Maria, are really nice and have taken very good care of us. They also have a restaurant with some delicious food, so you can eat here in this beautiful garden that's right on the Moselle. Yep. We're currently sitting in their garden. It is about as close as you can get to the Berg Elves yeah. Road well, yeah, we thought, and the hike. We thought we might hike there from here, but then like the kids are not going to do an hour hike. I mean, if, any, and a of half. You, if any, of you, any of you have been to Berg Elves, you know, unless you take the shuttle bus, you even have a bit of a hike just to get from the parking, mm -hmm. parking spot to there. And that was enough for our kids. Yeah, our kids got pretty tired. One of the reasons Berg Elves is so cool is because it is more than 850 years old and it is owned by the same family that originally built it. And they have managed to 
uh, form political alliances with whoever has been in power. They've only had one armed conflict in their 850 years of history. So pretty amazing. So the castle is intact. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. But Kevin and I first saw Berg Elz on our very first wedding anniversary, which we shared with you in our Reit im Winkel video. And uh, it was cool to get to go back to Berg Elz and see it again. Yeah, and I think uh, for dinner tonight, I think we might go over to Trice <gasps> Garden and go and eat at the restaurant, which is at the hotel we stayed in. I think that's going to be our plan yeah, for tonight. Yeah, we stayed in this really romantic, cozy hotel that had a hot tub in it and all this stuff in Tres Garden. But on the Carden side, right? Not Trace. Yes, it, it was on the Carden side. Trice, mm -hmm. Carden. So we wanted to film a lot talking there and, and showing you around Bergelt, uh, but everyone was tired and not feeling well. So oh. I'll show you the footage that we got. And um, of course, you're not allowed to film inside Bergelt. That's not allowed. So uh, we have just the outside to show you. If you want to see the inside, you've got to go see Bergelt for yourself. Yeah. And then tomorrow we're going to go see Trier, hopefully, as long as everyone's uh, healthy. Hop on the train and take the train mm -hmm. to Trier. We can take the train right from Moselkern here, yeah, to Trier. And one of our dear followers, Christian, is going to show us around Trier. And we can't wait to meet Christian tomorrow and have him show us around his hometown. Where are we going, Grayson? Burg Elz. Burg Elz. Grayson, what do you think of it? He thinks what it is amazing. Think, like his mind is, his mind is probably spoken like, this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing, I'm hungry, this is super amazing. <laughs> okay then. I you, love it. You love it? It's pretty, the castle is pretty. Isn't it's it over pretty? There. It's over there. It's over there? Yeah. yeah. We can show you inside, but we've never been in there before. I know, we've never been inside. What do you okay. think, Grayson? I got him. It's cool. It's cool? Pretty. I mean, it's like up close. Very cool. We haven't seen this, we haven't seen the castle since... 15 years? 15 years. <laughs> so this is pretty exciting for us to see it again. Yeah. So while you're enjoying some images of Berg Elts, I thought I'd share a little bit of the Elts history with you. The Elts family first erected a dwelling on this site, a massive rock nearly surrounded by the river Elts, nearly a thousand years ago. The surrounding forest provided a wealth of food and natural resources, and from their high vantage point, the Elts family controlled traffic between the fertile Maifeld Plateau and the Moselle River, a major medieval trade route. Over time, three separate branches of the Elts family, the Rubenach, Rodendorf, and Kempenich, built their homes in the castle complex. Today, Elts Castle is owned by Count Carl of the Golden Lion branch of the family, the others are the Silver Lion and the Buffalo Horns. The Golden Lion branch has retained sole ownership of the complex since 1815. Despite many wars in the region, Elts Castle has survived intact. This is not because the castle is remote or hidden away, but because the Elts family has always maintained wide-reaching political and social networks. No matter which army was in the region, the Eltses managed to use their influence to protect themselves. And here's a fun fact. Count Carl and his family live in the top floor of the Elts castle. It is still privately owned by them. All of the ticket sales go to the upkeep of the building. They actually do not make any profit on the ticket sales.
bring our kids back here and show them the castle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, they get to see all of the you know, all of the you know, building, all the parts of the building, and they love seeing all of the weapons and armor, and mm -hmm. especially, they especially like the um, treasure chamber to see all the gold and the swords and guns and stuff. So they, yeah. they really like that. Yeah, the kids loved the the paintings, the tapestries, mm -hmm. the you know the history of it being a thousand years old. Like it's so cool. Yeah, and uh, I mean the tour was a little bit boring for some of them. Um, for the longer time, but, but like I said, there were certain parts of the tour, the paintings and tapestry and some things that, that, that did catch their eye. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. It was good to show that to them. They didn't know much about the animals. Once a person tried to, once, a pers once the person who was making the tapestry tried to create, tried to create a lion, but it looked like a horse with a mane. That's right, they didn't know what lions looked like back in the 15 and 1600s, because they were they from- never, maybe, maybe never saw one. Africa, yeah. So they had to imagine what lions looked like, and that's what you see in the tapestries, or what they imagined exotic animals to look like. So cool. So Griffin, you asked the tour guide a lot of good questions. What was one of them about the wood? She said that the wood on the ceiling was 500 years old. Literally, it's really long. So I asked her if the wood is 500 years old, then why is it not rotted? Yes. And she said during the winter season, the government comes in and see if any repairs need to be done, and they make the repairs in the winter, right? They only show the castle from May to November. Is that right? Okay. Oh. Griffin, you loved seeing all the weapons and stuff in the castle, didn't you? Yeah, the rapiers. And you asked a lot of good questions. You asked our tour guide a lot of good questions. So you liked the paintings in the room? Yeah, the paintings on the ceiling in the rooms were extremely old. Yeah, and the tapestries, you were really oh, interested. Oh yeah, the, the, the tapestries were really cool, but, and they, they helped keep the heat inside the, the rooms. Yeah. And you got to see the kitchen where they make the fire, the huge fire to make oh, food. Oh yeah, and so they also had a giant ceramic like stove. fridge type thing or whatever. Yeah, ceramic a stove. Ceramic stove, and and they heat it up and then it makes the room really warm. Yeah. So they don't have to use a fireplace. Jason, what was your favorite part of the castle? The treasure room and the souvenir shop. Yeah. The souvenir shop. Yeah, let me see your cool sword you got there, Griffin. Oh, I got a sword that looks like gold from the souvenir shop. Hey, where's So cool. Mom, Mommy, you bought these for me and I like them. Yeah. Well, you didn't bought this. She, she's sparkly and this is, and this is to, to put her toys in. Ella, what was your favorite part of the castle? Mm. The gold. The gold. The treasury room, huh? Yeah. Did you like the kids' room and see the toys that they used to have? Yeah. I want to go, and I'm going to go in the water. Well, clothes are not waterproof.
much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video of seeing more of Germany and it's not in Bavaria. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the reason why we've shown you mostly Bavarian uh, videos is because we've only done day trips from our house. Yeah, it was six hours. Six hours was long with the kids yeah. to go. The kids, the kids were kids complaining. The they didn't like it. They didn't want to be driving for six hours. We stopped many times. And um, yeah, so. But it was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, we'll, we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Cheers.